This video is a supplement to a four hour video about plagiarism you should go watch first. Then again, you might have better things to do or taste. Uh, I'll just give you the context. One segment was about the YouTuber Illuminati, whose videos heavily plagiarize documentaries. She downloads the footage and then paraphrases the voiceover. And if you're lucky, she'll briefly acknowledge she's just telling you what happened in a documentary you could have watched for yourself. He's the grandfather of the MMR scare. The professor is semi-retired, but still charges up to $750 an hour to treat autistic children. So this grandfather of the anti-vax movement, as he described, charges $150 an hour to treat autistic children, which, you know, is fucking ridiculous. You're quoting another documentary. How are you getting these numbers wrong? And sometimes she just starts copying the voiceover. Uh, badly. They have a sister organization, the Good News Doctor Foundation. They have a sister organization, the Good Doctor Foundation. Oh my God, the name is on the screen. Does she record these in one take? The smart Alec in high school who had to write a 2000 word essay and submitted one with 1800 words of quotes decided to start a YouTube channel and it's not pretty. Illuminati's goal is to make as many videos as possible as fast as possible, and that means writing as little as she can and borrowing what other people already made by quoting them or reusing their footage. But she knows the videos would seem like low effort garbage if she told you where she got everything as she said it, so instead she often just doesn't. But what I found funny was she also uses various tricks to make it seem like she's not quoting something, or at least not as much as she really is. A good example is in the first video in her series about Andrew Wakefield. She brings up Rosemary Kessick, a prominent anti-vaxxer, explains who she is, and then briefly quotes her. She introduced quack diets for autistic people, which led to allergy-induced autism group. She says it improves them. She is not well known, but just as dangerous. This all seems fine, right? She's actually reading a blog post word for word, including the quote. She is the brain behind Vaxxed. She gave Wakefield the idea that MMR vaccines are the cause of autism. She introduced quack diets for autistic people, which led to allergy-induced autism group. She says it improves them. She is not well known, but just as dangerous. She did this to break up the reading again, because after this bit, she actually does go on to quote the blog post. She has it on screen and she reads from it and it slowly scrolls down. For about a minute and 15 seconds of this video, you're just watching her read a blog post to you. And it's especially excruciating because she just got done quoting Brian Deere for 45 seconds. It's endless. So there's a bit in the middle where she pretends she's not quoting anyone to make it feel less dull. She's quite sneaky about hiding this. You see the wall of text she quoted? If you scroll up slightly higher than she shows in her video, I mean one line of text, that's the part that she copied without telling you. That part is cut off the top of the screen so the viewer can't tell they're actually being read a blog for even longer than it looks. Most of the time when she quotes articles, even when she bothers to tell you she's quoting them, they're not even interesting or in-depth. In the other video I showed, they're almost always what you get if you just went to Wikipedia. Most of the places that aren't from Wikipedia come from Googling a really simple phrase, like, how common is autism? For example, when she quotes the page, how common is autism? In 1983, the DSM did not recognize God, imagine not having to write your video. This is just one of the first results if you Google how common is autism. Well, it was, we'll get to that. But it gets worse if you actually have done research on this topic. You know, like if you take this shit seriously or something. The page she's quoting is from the Autism Science Foundation, an organization founded by a former senior executive of Autism Speaks, an organization so shitty Blair repeatedly criticizes them in these videos. And trust me, I hate Autism Speaks. Like. Fuck Autism Speaks. The Autism Science Foundation is marginally better than Speaks. They don't think autism is caused by vaccines, for one, but they're still not a great resource to quote from. For example, the page Blair is quoting doesn't exist anymore because it turned out to be copied and pasted directly from Wikipedia. In 1983, the DSM did not recognize PDD, NOS, or Asperger's syndrome, and the criteria for autistic disorder, AD, were more restrictive. The previous edition of the DSM, DSM-4, included autistic disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, PDD-NOS, and Asperger's syndrome. Even when she tries to get away from Wikipedia, she can't, because her laziness inevitably leads her to the easiest stuff she can find, which is almost always someone else copying Wikipedia. It's an Ouroboros of laziness. 
that anyone can edit. Because Blair's videos are badly researched on purpose to save time, the sources she finds on her own are often sloppy shit, or even in this case plagiarised, if you consider copying from Wikipedia plagiarism, which I do, and clearly they do too, they took the page down. Blair's videos are just stock footage and quoting other people and occasionally cutting to her cartoon persona going, wow, wasn't that interesting? Can you believe I was able to find this? <laughs> this trick where she quotes people without telling you has served her quite well over the years. In a video called How Power and Control Changes People, she brings up the Stanford Prison Experiment and talks about it like this. This was to see how these guards would treat their fellow students based on the perceived divide between them. According to the lore that's grown up around the experiment. According to the lore. So, is she about to start summarizing her research in an original way, or is she about to start quoting someone? Neither. She's already started reading a New Yorker article to you. According to the lore that's grown up around the experiment, the guards, with little to no instruction, began humiliating and psychologically abusing the prisoners within 24 hours of the study's start. Sure, that looks bad, but at least it's in her list of sources, right? No, she forgot to put it in for this one. So this is plagiarism even if you believe the ridiculous paste bin excuse. So that's pretty funny, but would you like to guess where she might have got this article from? Yeah, it's on the Stanford Prison Experiment's Wikipedia page. She went to Wikipedia, found an article, and plagiarized it. Badly. The prisoners in return became submissive and depersonalized, taking the abuse and saying little in protest. The behavior of it was so involved and so extreme that the experiment, which was meant to last two weeks, was terminated after only six days. Why would you not retake that? Quoting stuff you got from Wikipedia, or quoting Wikipedia itself, is fine, especially if you use it as a springboard to deeper analysis. Wikipedia is trying to be a useful resource. That's not the problem here. The problem is, well, one, the plagiarism. And three, if you're just skimming a wiki before making an entire video about something, you miss obvious shit. Blair's videos get stuff wrong all the time. The one where she brought up the Stanford Prison Experiment has since been taken down because it's embarrassing. She talked about it as if it was a real, legitimate study with meaningful findings. The problem is, it wasn't. It's been debunked by experts for about 400 years. And then, half a decade ago, internal documents came out proving it was objectively bullshit. Professor Zimbardo lied, basically. But because Blair was just plagiarizing an article from someone who thought it was real at the time, she had no fucking idea. So she spread debunked misinformation to her audience. This is a massive problem with media platforms right now. YouTubers who know nothing about anything can misunderstand a bunch of articles and spread lies to millions of people, and then they get to vote on how you live your life. I wonder why everything's getting worse all the time. Plagiarism is just the tip of an iceberg of intellectual laziness that threatens to make all of us dumber. Even when people like Blair aren't just stealing shit, they still have no idea what they're talking about, so it's often wrong. Later on, she went back and made a follow-up video where she semi-apologized for this mistake and criticized the experiment. However, she didn't solve the problem that caused all this. The sources that she's now reading for minutes at a time are still from Wikipedia. She went back to the wiki, scrolled slightly further down, and is now quoting stuff she got from the criticism section. It was late in the evening of August 16, 1971, and 22-year-old Douglas Corpy, a slim, short-statued Berkeley graduate- SHORT-STATUTE?! Okay, for the last few years, I've tried to avoid making fun of when people misspeak in videos. It's not a substantive criticism, and it edges into making fun of things like dyslexia, which aren't to be laughed at. With Blair specifically, though, it's another example how lazy these videos are. She could have re-recorded any of these lines, but she's rushing. She makes three three videos a week. There's no time to read the words correctly, or write her own for that matter. Sometimes a sentence is misworded in a script, and almost every one of my scripts is a minimum of 4,000 words, so it's bound to happen when I'm making three videos every single week for you guys. Maybe the problem is she has to make these videos so fast. It's a shame someone's forcing her to do that. Whoever's in charge of making these videos should maybe reconsider. But that also isn't an excuse if I make a factual statement about an experiment like the Zimbardo experiment. The constant misreading of articles she stole about the Zimbardo experiment and the fact she doesn't fix any of this is an indicator of the level of care and attention these videos are getting. This has the fun side effect that almost every Illuminati video on any topic creates a brand new sub-community of people 
who know she's full of shit. All psychology majors, for example, but there's way more. For about 15 years, the Silent Hill fandom has been making fun of people who think the town of Silent Hill is based on Centralia, a real ghost town in Pennsylvania due to fires burning underground since the 60s. Silent Hill was not based on any real towns. It's largely based on surreal horror like Jacob's Ladder or the works of David Lynch. But it's mostly about circumcision. However, the writer of the 2006 movie adaptation has a personal family history with Centralia and drew inspiration from it. This interesting anecdote has quickly morphed into the lie that the entire series is based on this town. The developers of the games have had to explain this to people for over a decade, but are unable to stem the flow of misinformation because people who trade in interesting facts love to feed you shit. Blair has contributed to this by making a video about Centralia, the real life Silent Hill. Now sit down and listen about the tragic and true story of a town that inspired one of the greatest horror series, Centralia. Actually, I kind of lied there. Small correction, Blair has made two videos about Centralia, the real life Silent Hill. Many people know Centralia as the town that inspired the Silent Hill video games. She somehow managed to not notice the key fact of these videos is wrong. Twice! The second video has maybe my favorite example of just how fucking lazy these videos are. It's incredible. She brings up the previous video and says, ah, but it was just a short three minute thing. The video is 13 minutes. I have previously talked about this on my channel probably two or three years ago in a super brief three minute video that summarized the timeline of events that led to this never ending fire. So she didn't bother to check the length of her video before saying how long it was. And then when she got the time wrong, she didn't even go back to re-record it. I might sound like I'm joking when I say this, but I am genuinely amazed at the lack of effort. I am stunned by the fact the videos even exist considering how little time and attention went into making them. That in itself is a kind of achievement. But the Silent Hill fandom isn't the only niche sub-community to be graced by a stupid video full of lies. Blair's video on SeaWorld is so poorly researched that someone wrote a massive document explaining the many mistakes. She blames the deaths of animals that weren't at SeaWorld on SeaWorld, claims the timeline is fuzzy on the deaths of certain animals when we know the exact date, confuses SeaWorld with Sea Land, a different park, and when describing an injury suffered by trainer Ken Peters, refers to him as Peter. Even though Don was the first trainer to die, another trainer, Peter, was attacked four years beforehand in 2006. And the well just keeps getting deeper. I've seen posts on Reddit from pagans who hate the shit that she's made about their stuff. And the Vocaloid community seems to hate her with a pretty fiery passion too. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand these because they're not my area of expertise, which is why I wouldn't make a video about it, Blair. Some of her videos are on actually important topics like medicine or science, where getting this shit wrong like affects people's lives. Blair is fucking lucky. Brian Deere is such a good researcher and she ripped him off so closely and only got some of the facts wrong. This might just be me, but I think it's bad to spread lies to hundreds of thousands of people for money. Not sure if that's a common opinion though. I can kind of see why she relies so hard on quotes now, because when she tries to do her own research, everything she sees seems to turn to nonsense, like a weird Medusa. Now, if Ben Shapiro met Medusa, that's what you'd call short statued BANG! This voiceover is here to make you forget what my beard looks like, so the footage I shot two weeks later connects better. This completely insane level of self-assured stupidity helps to propagate known falsehoods throughout the internet, and is basically why we live in hell. Even I fell victim to Blair's idiocy while I was making this video. Okay, so I've only ever seen the name Centralia written down. Like, I've never heard it said out loud, I've only ever seen it on fancy sites and uh, forum posts when I've been arguing with people about Silent Hill, that sort of thing. So when I saw Blair's video, I assumed, assumed she at least knew how to pronounce it correctly. So I started saying it like that. It's actually pronounced Centralia. I know Blair doesn't know what she's talking about 90% of the time, and I still took her word for it, literally. Humans are hardwired to give other people the benefit of the doubt, even people we know we can't trust, in ways we don't realize until we recorded a whole video getting an important name wrong, or tried a herbal remedy instead of going to the doctor. My point is, falsehoods like this can be dangerous. People see videos like this and believe them and internalize them on all sorts of levels, and then go go and make a major life choice as a result of it. Or they go bother Masahiro Ito with questions about something made up. 
Leave him alone! Let the man design World of Tanks skins in peace! In the other video, I showed a very brief Montagi of stuff she stole directly from the Fire Festival documentary. But there was way too much, and it got really boring. But since I went through the effort of cutting it all together, and some people might think it's funny, I don't know, here it is now. McFarland had booked the Fire Festival the same weekend that the National Regatta takes place in Bermuda. They booked the festival during the busiest weekend of the year. It's called the National Regatta. This boating event is massive, bigger than the Super Bowl. It's like the Super Bowl there. The island population doubles and villas and hotels are booked for months in advance. And the island basically doubles in population size and all of the hotels get booked months, maybe a year in advance. As one of his former employees puts it, they were selling villas that just didn't exist. Billy had sold a villa package that didn't exist. Maybe you remember hearing the joke that white people love camping unless it's a surprise. Well, I know where you heard it. Man, white people love camping unless it's a surprise. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Blair. It's really easy to make videos where you don't have to write anything. This, this bit's been easy for me. I just, I just play the clips next to each other. I don't have to give any commentary. I'm gonna have my coffee and I sit down. That's right, Rachel, just hit, just hit play again. We, we don't need to explain this. McFarland was trying to build a city within a city. We were building a city within a city. Cash flow was also becoming an issue for those on the app development side of things, with one employee claiming their favorite Friday topic was consistently, did you get paid and was it the right amount? Friday afternoon, our favorite topic is, did you get paid and was it for the right amount? Jarul and Billy made a toast to quote, living like movie stars, partying like rock stars and fucking like porn stars, end quote. Here's to living like movie stars, partying like rock stars, Billy. And fucking like porn stars. <laughs> Andy claimed that he tried to see the positive side and thought of Woodstock. All I kept thinking about was Woodstock. Many people don't talk about the trapped cars, the mudslides. Does anybody talk about the hundreds and hundreds of cars that were stuck on the throughway for days? Does anybody talk about the mudslides? How many people died of drug overdoses, the lack of food and water? How many people died of drug overdoses? Does anybody talk about the lack of food, almost no water? Absolutely not. According to Andy King, they had four 18-wheeler trucks filled with Evian water. Four 18-wheeler trucks filled with Evian water. Emails were sent from the Fire Festival team to the attendees. One such email read, I noticed you hadn't created your Fireband account yet. I noticed you hadn't created your Fireband account yet. It is your wallet for the weekend, so load it appropriately. It is your wallet for the weekend, so load it appropriately. Still, many bought into this, and the first rounds of attendees uploaded $800,000 to them. The first batch of kids had loaded $800,000 on these wristbands. A former Fire Festival employee said that some of these Bahamian workers started putting hits out on people. Some of them started putting hits out on people, either to take them hostage and then get ransom, or just to hurt and injure either to take them hostage and get a ransom or to hurt and injure. And he claims that he changed clothes with an employee and hid in the back of a car to get to safety. And I literally traded clothes with one of the employees that had been working with me. When confronted over a team call with the fact that Fire had committed fraud, he said this was just a case of false advertising. I mean, that's fraud. That is, uh, I would call that a uh, false advertising. He created a company called Spling, which gave off a Google Plus sort of vibe. It was basically a duplicate of Google Plus kind of vibe. Finding a tent and finding luggage became a free-for-all. I was like, all right, it's a free-for-all. One attendee claims that he didn't want neighbors, and so his friends started pissing on the beds and poking holes in tents around them. And we didn't want neighbors. We just started poking holes and flipping mattresses, and my buddy pissed on a few of the beds. Another states that there was a looting mentality, and one woman had a whole pallet of toilet paper. It became this looting mentality. One woman had a whole pallet of toilet paper. Somebody else had this whole giant box of pillows. It became very barbaric in a sense. Someone else had an entire box of pillows and it became barbaric. Later in a documentary around the event, Billy himself claims that they- Oh really? You found this part out in a documentary, did you? <laughs> and uh, that's not the right URL. I think you mean 123films.cc. Grant Margolin paid a $35,000 penalty and agreed to a seven year director and officer bar, but didn't admit to or deny any SEC charges. This is the text from the end card of the documentary saying what happened. She's just reading it out in a slightly different order. She must have got sick of coming up with ways of quoting it. You can write an entire video about a seemingly complicated topic very quickly if you don't mind sloppily reconstituting the easiest available information. 
Jamie Oliver would hate these because these are the chicken nuggets of video essays. I've had a chicken nuggets joke in my head for like weeks and I'm not sure why. And I just realized now coming here to film that my props table has a fucking chicken hat on it staring at me. And I forgot why I got this. I don't know what it's for.